This is the Memory and Resistance Laboratory podcast. I am Latipa, Director of the Memory and Resistance Laboratory and Associate Professor of Media and Cultural Studies at the University of California, Riverside. The Memory and Resistance Laboratory is a hub for anti-racist, decolonial, and feminist of color artistic research. In this podcast series, Memory and Resistance in the Time of COVID, students from UCR interview people across the fields of education, art, medicine, and labor organizing to ask about the larger political, social, historical, and economic impacts of our current circumstances for vulnerable communities. In this episode, we are joined by Chris Smalls, an Amazon employee who was fired after he helped organize a work stoppage at the company's warehouse in Staten Island, New York, in protest over a lack of protective gear and hazard pay for employees. Chris Smalls is interviewed by Hong Ye Deng, a third-year student majoring in media and cultural studies at the University of California, Riverside. So I'm glad to have a meeting today with Chris Smalls. So who helped organize a warehousing worker strike. So Chris, thanks for your coming today. No problem. So Thank you for having me. Your, yeah, I've, I've watched your interviews a few times, but maybe not everybody who's listening right now knowing the whole story. Mm-hmm. So can you just let can can you just tell us the beginning and how this came to be and what was the reason that let you organizing a workout at Amazon's warehouse. Got you. Yeah, so uh, for those who don't know, my name is Chris Smalls. Uh, I've been with Amazon since 2015. Um, I opened up three buildings for them, New York, New Jersey, and Connecticut. Uh, I was a supervisor, business title process assistant. I managed the outbound department for PIC which is the department responsible for picking out the customer's orders before they'd be packed out to be shipped out the building. Um, In the beginning of March, uh, some of my employees, my colleagues began to fall ill. They were uh, fatigued, dizzy. Some of them were vomiting at their workstations. Um, A lot of them didn't come to work. They had flu-like symptoms. So it was a very scary situation. We didn't have any cleaning supplies. We didn't have any uh, masks or facial masks. We didn't have any gloves provided. Uh, we didn't have the cleaning supplies um, for the equipment or our workstations. So uh, it was business as usual up until about the second or third week of March. Um, I raised my concerns to my HR department to have the building quarantined and sanitized for a minimum of two weeks uh, to be proactive instead of reactive um, because this time we didn't have any confirmed cases and I wanted to make sure that everybody was safe when I seen that everybody was getting sick around me. Um, they pretty much swept it under the rug because uh, we didn't have any confirmed cases at the time. So uh, that's when I had to take further action. Okay. So on March, yeah, so on March 24th, um, I returned back to work after taking some time off to protect myself and my family. I didn't want to get sick. Uh, I started fighting behind the scenes sending out emails to the health department, the CDC, the state government of New York. Um, And then I had to go back to work on March 24th. When I went back, that's when I noticed my colleague, she was sick. Her eyes were bloodshot red. Her face was rosy red. She was fatigued. She was sluggish. She told me she was sick out of her own mouth. And she went for testing the night before, which was March 23rd, that Monday. So we all know you don't get the test unless you have severe symptoms. So um, I told that she should go home, and she did. This was around 9 o'clock that morning. Two hours later, we had a manager's meeting, um, something we do every single day amongst the managers, and that's when we learned about the first case. Uh, We had an associate that tested positive on March 11th, but he hasn't been in the building since. So 
Um, the, I don't know if you guys know, but the Queens, New York building a week prior closed down because they had a confirmed case. So I was expecting Staten Island to do the same thing, but that didn't happen. Uh, they told so, us. Mm-hmm. So, so they, they told you after you knew that you had the one case and your yeah. colleague is fake. So they instruct you like just not telling anybody or. Yep. They told us not to tell the employees. We don't want to cause a panic. Um, business as usual uh we're going to wow. the individuals on that side of the building so that was uh right there that was my last time working for amazon you know um mm-hmm. i left the building an hour later with mm-hmm. the person i ride to work with um not to return as a supervisor um but to return and tell people the truth um every day that week i sat in the cafeteria for eight hours a day telling all the employees the truth about what happened and the truth that they possibly been exposed to somebody who tested positive. Um, because being a supervisor myself and my colleague who I sit home was a supervisor, I know what our job entitles, which means we have to do hand in hand engagements, face to face engagement within six feet. So if she was positive, which she turned out to be, um, she possibly put hundreds of people at risk. So at that time I was uh, definitely in the general manager's office in the HR office every single day that week, uh, voicing my concerns with a group of 10 people or more. Um, after doing this the entire week, um, off the clock, unpaid on my own free will, that's when they decided to quarantine me on Saturday, uh, March 28th, around 9 o'clock that morning. Um, only me. They didn't quarantine none of the employees that were exposed to her for 10 hours a day for multiple days in a row. They didn't even quarantine the person I ride to work with every single day. So that tells you right there that, you know, they had a target on me to silence me and only me. Um, so that's when I had to take further action and start mobilizing the walkout, which I held on March 30th. So mm-hmm. I, I went home, uh, got in contact with the media um, and started got uh, talking to people that was working over the weekend to start passing out notes and uh, photocopying, putting them in the bathrooms, um, spreading it out word of mouth. And um, everything came together on March 30th, um, around 12.30. That's when we held the walkout for about two hours. And then two hours after that, I was terminated. Yeah, I saw the news. So Amazon said they fired you because you after you received multiple warnings for violating social distancing guidelines. So what are your thoughts behind this reasoning? And could you just tell us how does the social distancing distancing work in the collective? They don't work. <laughs> you can't do oh, operations. Yeah, you can't do operations without uh, you know, being this six feet. It doesn't work like that at working at warehouses. You know, they say that you know you can practice it, but you can't. Not all day. You know, so when does it apply? That's the only that's the real question. When does the six feet rule social distancing apply at warehouses? Um, we don't know because you have to use uh, the cafeteria. You got to use restrooms. You got to use the water fountains. Um, you got to use the microwaves. So uh, when did I receive these warnings? I never did. Um, as far as what they're saying about me violating multiple safety guidelines, uh, first of all, they wasn't implemented until April. We didn't see them in black and white. Um, I'm a supervisor. So if, if there were any type of policies or uh, um, rules to be implemented, I'm supposed to get that information to share to my, my own employees in my department. So I never even had the opportunity to get that, number one. Number two, uh, like I said before, um, they didn't quarantine nobody else. Um, she was around hundreds of people for 10 hours a day. I was around her for five minutes. Um, and they didn't even quarantine the person I ride to work with every single day. You know, what does that tell everybody? So I'm you sorry know? to eat interrupt you so you mean you said like the policy allowed people who fake and still come back to work I mean, yes mean that? Wow. absolutely the policy allows that because they don't officially quarantine you until they receive the physical documentation from the doctor which can take a number of days especially but dealing there, with yeah but there's a problem like we all know the coronavirus can like dominate for days maybe like exactly two weeks. yeah two weeks so you'll yeah. never know. Yeah. That's, a, that's, a, that's, a, that's exactly right. That the fact that somebody could be positive and um, they could be asymptomatic. They could be totally healthy to you, but they could be carriers. And then you would never yeah. know because you're working around them. Yeah. For me, I, I think if people who think they like got 
got infected by Corona, they should just go home, stay home, or go find some like medical treatment. Yeah, it's very hard yeah, in yeah. New York. We're in, we're in the mm-hmm. Epic Center of New York, and um, it's very hard to even get a doctor's appointment right now. It's very hard to get tests and get the test results uh, soon. So it's like you gotta you gotta do it when you're severely sick, and by that time you've done been to work already and you've been exposed to multiple people you know yeah and the funny thing is after walk out walk out amazon pledges like temperature checks and the mask in all warehousing so do you think this new measures can like protect people who's from no like- no it's too late the virus been in the buildings for how long you know almost two months um if it wasn't for me doing what i did would anything happen right now? We don't know. That's the real question. They didn't start doing nothing until I got terminated and I had to speak up for everybody. That's when they started implementing the tape, the, the temperature checking thing that they're doing. That's when they started sending out PPE. And that's when Jeff, that's when Jeff Bezos himself started walking around his own facility, something he never done. So so it happened, you know, after after Chris. It wasn't before Chris. It wasn't BC. So um that's exactly what the the facts is. The fact that I had to do what I had to do for changes to be done. That's the real concern. Yeah. Also, the Amazon was raising the overtime wages. You know. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So do you think money. like people? Yeah. Do you think people really wanted to work or yeah, they have to because they have bad well, or think about it. You know, they offering two dollar raise and double time overtime. You. You're talking about making almost six thousand dollars a month as an Amazon employee. That's a lot of money, right? So yeah, but it's risky. people, people yeah. will come to work for that health. They they don't care. They put their their the money over their health. Um, and they come to work sick as a dog because they're making so much money right now with the company that is 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 blood money. Yeah. True. So have you ever like? Directly organize the track that you got fired. But did I, I say that again? Like, have you ever uh, regretted organizing no. the track that get you fired? No. No, absolutely not. I no regrets because the risk is so you know enormous, is, and the management like keep attacking you online, like on Twitter, on Facebook, and yeah. Yep. Yeah, I have no regrets. You know, um, I felt like I did the right thing. I still do. Yeah, true. So, so like, you know, where people can support you? Like, do you have a group or other employees and the supporters? So you can yeah, you know, go you can follow me you. on Twitter. Follow uh-huh. me on Twitter. Mm-hmm. Uh, shut underscore down Amazon. Yeah. Uh, on Instagram, Chris dot Smalls underscore. Uh, um, I try to keep everybody involved with what we're doing and support us there. We also raise money with our GoFundMe um, so I can uh, help out employees that haven't been paid for over a month. So, yeah. Can, uh, you already get the medium spotlight, you know. Mm-hmm. So, what's your next step? Like May 1st. Maybe, May day, um, we're walking out. Um, okay. That's what that's what we mobilizing now. All right. Thank you.